All right, Buffalo Sabres Stanley Cup playoff drought. Let's see. Let's count the years of the drought. We got one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is nine years officially as the NHL announced their 2014 playoff bracket the other day, and the Buffalo Sabres aren't in it. There are 24 teams that made it, seven didn't. We're one of them. Let's see how we got here. So to me, it all starts February 23rd, 2011. Tom Galasano sells the team. He's done. Terry Pagula walks in with his money bags, goes, I'll take one Buffalo Sabres, please. We're coming out of a season going 43, 29, and 10. Very solid season. Lose in game seven to Philadelphia in the first round of the playoffs. And that, my friends, is the last time you'll see the Sabres in the playoffs for a very long time. First official year with Pagula under ownership, 2011, 2012. We go 39, 32, and 11. We miss the playoffs by three points. On July 2nd of that offseason, Derek Roy is traded to Dallas for uh, Steve Ott, who will become the captain in a year or so. So, yep, no uh, playoffs in year one. And uh, Pagula had previously promised a Stanley Cup in five years. So, already burned one of those years and not looking promising. 2012, 2013, Lindy Ruff is fired after 17 games, after going 6-10 and 1 to start the year, Ron Olsen comes in, goes 15-11 and 5 in that uh, lockout shortened season. We end up going 21-21 and 6. We're last in the division. And that to me is when the rebuild, the never-ending rebuild, really officially begins. Uh, Pominville in that uh, trade deadline is traded to Minnesota for Johan Larson, Matt Hackett, first in 2013 and a second in 2014. It's not uh, worth it to even say who became out of those picks because... They're no one. Next year, 2013-2014, his third official season of being owner of the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, right off the hop, Thomas Vanek's traded to the Islanders for Matt Molson. Uh, we go 4-15-1 to start the year. Ron Alston and Darcy Regeer, they're out of here. Ted Nolan comes in. Uh, Tim Murray's also brought in as general manager. Ted Nolan will go 17-36-9 and nine to finish the season. And... Uh, terrible year he was brought in to be fired though can't really blame ted nolan so that year at the trade deadline ryan miller and steve ott is traded to the st louis blues for yaroslav flack chris stewart william carrier a couple picks and um like a week later yaroslav flack is traded for michael neuver so he didn't even play a game i don't think uh, molson also went to minnesota that year but we got him back in the off season so don't worry about that guys we got matt molson back uh, we would win two games in the final 20. We'd finish 21, 51, and 10 for 52 points. And the saving grace, Sam Reinhart comes in after we lose the draft lottery to the Florida Panthers. Next year, Reinhart plays like his nine games. He's gone, gets sent back to the WHL. He's not ready. So we're on our own. Uh, nothing notable happens in 2015 season because uh, we sucked. We're tanking. Everyone knew it. Tank for McDavid. Um... Only thing is, on February 11th, uh, the deadline, Tyler Myers, Drew Stafford, Joel Armia, Brendan Lemieux, first round pick, they were going to Winnipeg for Zach Vigosian, Jason Kaysdorf, and Evander Kane. Gergensons was the all-star that year for our team. Uh, I think he had like 30 points or something. Not good at all for an all-star, but the entire country of Latvia decided, hey, we want this guy in the all-star game. So they did it. So he got in there. It's pretty cool to see. There's a song about him. Everyone knows the song. Uh, finish last in the league, lose the draft lottery to the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, we get Jack Eichel. Uh, so at the end of that uh, season, Ted Nolan's fired, and that's when we lose another thing, and that's the coach sweepstakes, the Mike Babcock sweepstakes. We settle for Dan Bilesma. When we brought in Dan Bilesma, he had won a cup with Pittsburgh, won a couple cups with Pittsburgh, I'm pretty sure. And we're going, okay, that's all right. We might not have gotten Babcock, who was kind of accepted as the best coach in the league at that point after leaving Detroit. Went to Toronto, we got Dan Bilesma, and we were all okay with it at the time. We also traded for Ryan O'Reilly at that draft. Um, we traded away Zadorov and Mikhail Gregorenko, and that's basically the meat and bones of the trade. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, we all know what happens with him. However, in 2015-2016, that's Ryan O'Reilly's first year here. He'll lead the team in scoring with 60 points. Uh, Vander Kane, O'Reilly, and Eichel are kind of seem to be the big three that's going to take us to the promised land. So five years in, we still aren't anywhere close to making the playoffs. Definitely not anywhere near cup contention. Next year, 2016-2017, throughout the month of December, we're 13, 15, and 8. 
Uh, Eichel, of course, leads the league in scoring. We finished the year 33, 37, and 12. Disco Dan Bilesma and Tim Murray get the X. They're gone. We bring in Phil Housley. We bring in Jason Botterill. Draft middle set at the draft, and we were all pretty excited, honestly. 2017-2018, this is Botterill and Housley's first, like, full year being in charge. Uh, pretty terrible start to the season. We win zero games in the first five. We go 10, 20, and 8 throughout the first 38 games. We finish the year 25, 45, and 12. Eichel, of course, leads the team in scoring. That's a trend. We win the draft lottery. Rasmus Dallin comes to Buffalo. He's going to be the next Lindstrom, the next Eric Carlson. He's going he's gonna to be the one that takes us to the promised land. July 1st of that year, Ryan O'Reilly goes to St. Louis for Vlad Sabadka, Patrick Berglund, uh, pick, first round pick that became Ryan Johnson. H. Thompson is well in there. He's in the minors with injury right now. That offseason, we also get Connor Sheary and Jeff Skinner. And that Skinner uh, trade, pretty good for us. Second round pick in Cliff Pooh. Kind of fleece Carolina there for the first year. Next year, 2018-2019, great start. Everyone's super happy. Dowling looks awesome. Got that 10-game win streak. We're going to be scary good again, RJ said at best. After that 10-game win streak, we lost five games straight. Eichel had a great uh, season with 82 points. However, we would only win 12 games in the final three months of the season after that uh, that awesome 10-game win streak. We finished the year 33, 39, and 10. And that's enough. The fans have seen enough. Phil Housley, he's gone. He's back to Arizona as an assistant coach right now. 2019-2020, the most recent season that just concluded for us the other day. Ralph Kruger, first year head coach, came over. Everyone thought he was a soccer coach. I personally liked him. I'd like to see him get another year. I don't hate him as much as I hated Biles, Moy, and Housley. So we start off pretty well again this year. We go 8-1-1. One, one. Home opener was awesome. I was there. We destroyed the Devils like 7-2. It was a fantastic game. We looked super good to start the year. Everything fell off a cliff, though, including Jeff Skinner. Jeff Skinner is having a terrible year. Zach Bogosian expressed his displeasure with the team, and we ended up terminating his contract. He's with Tampa. He'll probably win a Stanley Cup this year, let's be honest. Uh, Dowling shows some regression. Uh, we traded Scandella to Montreal for a fourth-round pick. Immediately flipped that fourth-round pick for Michael Froelich. And a little bit later, Montreal would also trade Scandella to the St. Louis Blues, who won the Stanley Cup last year with some dude named Ryan O'Reilly. Might have heard of him. Traded Scandella there for a second-round pick. So we basically traded Marco Scandella for Michael Froelich. But Montreal was able to get a second-round pick for him, and... Jason Bradwell kind of made Mark Bergman look like a genius in there. Uh, about halfway through the season, that guy Dwayne called in to WGR, had that awesome rant. Everyone rallied around him. It was great. Uh, hopefully the Pagulas heard that because it was a cry for help. Um, another girl on YouTube made a Hey Jason Bottrell song, which was pretty cool too. The 2010s night, Kim and Terry got booed. No one liked them. Uh, they blamed it on Gary Bettman, but... Um, we all know it was them. So basically, this year we wasted an awesome year from Eichel. He was on pace for over 100 points. And basically, everything just fell off a cliff, and they didn't do anything about it. At the trade deadline, Botterill traded for, um, who was it, Wayne Simmons? Botterill traded for Wayne Simmons at the deadline. He was the guy that, he was the big fish that we got. We also got Dominic Cahoon from the Penguins, but that meant Sherry and Evan Rodriguez were gone. So basically, we bought at the deadline. It was Horrible, terrible, terrible idea. Nowhere near. We missed the playoffs by three points. And just the other day, uh, Kim Pagula basically kind of undermined the fans, saying that they knew more than we do, which, honestly, I don't know if that's true. I don't think she has any idea what she's doing. And uh, Jason Battle is coming back for a fourth year. So since the Pagulas took over at the end of the 2010-2011 season, we played 691 games. We've won 260 of them, lost 343 of them, and also lost 88 of them in overtime or shootout. And in that span, that nine-year playoff drought, Toronto, Florida, Arizona, they all rebuilt. Vancouver, they're coming back up now. Montreal, they had that off year. They're looking like they're going to be good now. Detroit and Ottawa, wouldn't be surprised if they were better than us next year. But um, hopefully we can get this... Uh, get this fixed here because this is a dumpster fire and Eichel's going to want out soon. So uh, if K 
Kim or Terry Pagula watches this, please sell the team. It would make us all very, very happy. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. This is the first YouTube video I've made, so it's going to be kind of awkward. But um, hopefully you guys liked it, enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to make some more videos in the future for you. So thank you guys so much for watching, and make sure to follow the social Sabres Access on everything. And uh, yeah, guys, there's always next year.